Hey guys, what's up? I uh, meant to get my deck list profile coming up before I went to YCS Austin, but uh, I didn't really get a chance to. A lot of stuff was going on with school on that Friday, and then we left and never really had time to make the profile. Um, I ended up going X3, losing my third game in round nine of day one. Uh, so I, I didn't quite make it to day two. Um, and considering there was a lot of X2s that didn't get top 32, um, and one of my top breakers had already dropped by round nine. I really feel like I probably couldn't have top 32 even if I had won uh, my games all the way straight through anyway. But uh, anyway, I wanted to talk about the YCS, the deck, how the build changed, um, how I felt about the build, and um, so just some other things concerning that um, in this video. So. First time I did the deck profile, uh, it did change quite a bit and it was working rather well. Um, so I'm going to start with the monsters as always with uh, three priestess. Um, of course you have to run her along with three magician. And since this is the third video over this, I'm going to be skipping over some of the very... Uh, a lot of the things that I said in the other videos with the main deck. Um, again, we have two temperance. Um, the difference in this build is that I was also running two justice. Um, Justice is in here over Breaker. Uh, the idea behind this was that um, instead of having Breaker destroy a, a spell trap, getting access to Priestess more quickly um, was generally more important, and that did, was true yesterday, uh, very much so. Um, like I, I, I saw that the games that I generally would lose are games that either I didn't get to a priestess, or they were somehow able to always keep priestess off the field for whatever reason, or I got O2K'd. I guess that would be another another reason. And so having two justice and two temperance while, you know, potentially being dead, uh, because uh, there's four things to fetch priestess and there's only three priestess, um, it worked out really well. The theory of it did play out quite well in the YCS. But that's the general idea. Because Breaker is only decent against Fire Fist. Um, I don't like the fact that, you know, he can... You can't chain him to a, a Tinky like you can to Misty or Dust Tornado. And so, you know, you can only break either a, a Fire Formation that's already been used or a may, maybe a Spell Trap that's on the field. Um, and against Mermels, it's just going to make them chain their Spheres or whatever else they have. So I, I just didn't feel like Breaker was a good meta call. Um, in the event. Um, I also ran the two effect Beller and two Maxi main deck. I was expecting to play Fire Fist and Mermails and I did not. Not the whole day. I played only two Fire Fists and one Mermail the entire day surprisingly. There was just a whole lot of decks that were all over the place. It was pretty chaotic. And then of course the two tracks uh, to conclude the monster lineup. On the spells we got the three staples, the three secrets, the two mass two masters, uh, two eternity, two fate, two wisdom, two power, and then one life, one tower. Uh, this doesn't change, it's the same spell lineup that I did have, um, and it's just, in my opinion, from testing, is the best lineup for the spells. Uh, traps, I was running three threatening roars. Um, I felt like running three was going to be necessary just to not get OTK'd by mermels. And it's also good to not let Fire Fist attack you. And also, I was a little bit fearing Heretics, since Trigodi is not really an out to them anymore, the way they're building their decks. Um, I really wanted to have an okay Heretic matchup, because Heretics will just kill you if you don't have an out. Um, I didn't play any Heretics, but um, I definitely didn't want to have to lose because I didn't have a threatening against them. Um, and then I had two two Solemns, and then also uh, I was running two Fiendish Chains. Um, Fiendish Chain is generally better than Breakthrough Skill, actually. Um, blocking their attack off is just very helpful to like save a creature or to save yourself on damage. Um, and Breakthrough Skill only really comes up if they have MSC, and only if they have cards like Nashiri Beast or, Se or Sheehan or some sort of... Um, creature that actually has an effect during my own turn. And so I side deck breakthrough skills so that I would have a very strong Dino Rabbit and um, um, sh uh, six Samurai matchup because I could have breakthrough skills and uh, Fiendish Chains and breakthrough skills. 
and that would really give me a lot of outs to the stuff that they would side in on me. So that's the main deck, it's 41. Um, the, it actually worked really well, I liked the Devil Justice, Devil Temperance. Um, it, it, it did work really well, the theory of it did. Um, I Two of the three games that I lost was due to inconsistencies though, I'll get into that later, and the third game was just really bad luck. Uh, on the side deck, uh, I was siding the third maxi for like windups or mainly for mermails, things that just spam. Uh, you side two kaiku for just decks that rely on the graveyard, injection very lowly for like six samurais or things that just summon big stuff. I also sided it again against fire fist. Um, it, it's really good to get over stuff. Uh, I was only siding one Jalgen. Um, when I was running two, it was just kind of awkward. I would like draw two and I wouldn't need to, or I would draw two and like, let's say I had Defissure up already and I'm playing against Mermel or something, and then they would just have Marksman and it was just not good. It just really sucked. So I cut it down to one just so I can side it in, maybe draw it, or just fetch it with a tower or some, something like that. Um, also have the three D Fissures, the three MSTs, and then I was also siding two Death Tornado, and this Two dust and three MSC against Firefist was really good. It works really well. And then the two breakthrough skill for matchups like Six Samurai and um, Car Curry or whatever else can summon Sheen's or the Cherry Beast. And then the extra deck's pretty much the same. I'm just going to run through it real quickly. Uh, one Catastor, one Librarian. Uh, Tempest Magician's new. I had an extra space because I'm not main decking any fours. So I took out my stroke, and this just seemed like the best filler. Um, but one temp, uh, Temperance, one Wyvern, one Arcanite Magician, one Scrap Dragon, one Crimson Blader, and one Blackwing Dragon, and then Shining Elf, Gachi, Golem, Zen Mains, Big Eye, Herophant, and Gustav Max. I actually only summoned one time the entire event. I summoned Shining Elf one time. I never had a moment where I needed a Synchro play, or where I could do a Synchro play, where there was a better play. and. So I really didn't even touch my extra deck hardly at all. So that was the that was the deck that I took. Um, as far as my matchups and my thoughts on on it all, um, and I'm gonna have to take my my notes here from the matches. Uh, round one, I played against the mirror match, and um, he was really kind of a novice player at, at least of, at the deck. He kept forgetting that you had to have a monster to activate fate and. Um, he also didn't side Kaiku, um, which was a really big deal in games two and three whenever I was Kaikuing all of his monsters out, and he couldn't fake me even with creatures and, and things like that. And it was it was really just a blowout. Um, he, it was a rough match for him. Uh, round two, I played against Watts, which almost killed me. Um, they were drawing Swords of Villain Light and just like warnings and judgments all the time, but I ended up pushing through it because you can Wisdom Priestess to swing through swords, or you can just blow up their spell traps and like swing over their small monsters. Um, but I almost like, lo lost just because they were drawing ridiculously amazing the entire time. Um, round three, I played against Dark Worlds, um, and I got really lucky. Um, he went first and eradicated me, and I lost. And then I won game two. Um, game two, I just ha I ended up getting a defensure out, and he couldn't get it off the board, and I just killed him. And then game three, he turn one eradicated me, and I had four spells. I don't know what the spells were, but what ended up happening, the reason why I didn't lose was because the other two cards in my hand was Magician and Temperance, and so I normally summoned Magician to search secrets and then uh, waited, and then it was my turn again, and I, I was going to be able to, you know, secrets and summon Temperance to go get Priestess and maybe not get killed. And um, I drew into, and he didn't draw another monster. Was the other thing he drew really, he drew really poorly. But then, in my follow-up turn, I ended up drawing into uh, Kaiku, and so instead of summoning Temperance, I just summoned Kaiku and pushed and killed his Graphas. And then I summoned Temperance and Secrets and went into Priestess, and I was able to push for the game, even though I had eradication. So I just got really lucky that uh, he couldn't follow up the play by bringing Grapha back, and that I had these two in my hand, which was like probably one of the few ways you can really get out of an eradication and push back. Um, but that was my round three matchup. Um, round four played against 
Uh, one second. I didn't write it down. Oh, I played against the Dino Rabbit. I drew really sacky against the Dino Rabbit player. Um, I ended up drawing both times. I opened with Priestess, three spell books. I, I don't know what they were. Let's just say they were these. And Monster Born. Like, that was like my opening hand slash I had that by turn three both times. And that's just really difficult for Dino Rabbit to deal with. And it was just a blowout. Um, I felt kind of bad for drawing so well, but. It happens, and I also sighed pretty hard for that with Braithers skills and whatnot, so that's a pretty hard matchup for two for them. Uh, round five, I played against Lightsworn, and I lost. Um, and I didn't lose to Lightsworn so much as I lost to me drawing bad. Um, I was drawing hands like Devil Priestess. Oops. Like my opening hand, uh, game one, was. Double Priestess, Fate, Eternity, Justice, Temperance. And there was absolutely nothing that I could do. And I don't remember what I top decked. I top decked something that didn't matter, like another Temperance. It was something that I couldn't play. It wasn't another spellbook, and it wasn't anything that like made my hand better. And he had two straight turns of just milling and then swinging at me. And I just couldn't deal with it, and he just completely murdered me. And then game two, I opened with double priestess, public of life, justice, and two temperance. And I was just really mad that my deck was like drawing bad like that, because that's just really awkward hands that don't come up. And so I lost my round five and was 4-1 uh, after that. Um, round six. I did not even write down, I, I just 2 owed somebody, I don't even know what it was. Oh, it was wind-ups, sorry about that, I should have written all this down. I played against wind-ups, and um, he swung immediately at me, and I had a trag that he could not deal with, and I was able to just beat him down with track. he drew like no traps, he drew really bad, and I just beat him down with track. And then game two, my opening hand was double max C, effect Beller. Uh, and Trag, and all I did was just wait for him to make one push, I max seed it, he had to stop, he swung, I, I dropped Trag, and then I just sat on that until he tried to push again, I, he, I max seed again, and then I was able to push over his field because I had so much card advantage that there wasn't really much that he could do at all. And uh, <coughs> that was my round six. Um, Sorry, I'm having to like read my notes and it's okay. Round seven was against Firefist, and round game one he made a misplay. Whenever uh, I made it, I made the play uh, secrets for magician, for master, for fate. Oops, that's not on the screen. Um, for fate, and then I set the fate obviously, and he something he tinkied for bear and then attacked with bear, and I said uh, fate for two. And he immediately activated Forbidden Lance, and he hit a targeted magician. And I was, lo and I, so I got to fate the bear, and he called the judge because he thought that fate immediately targets. And he, I guess he thought I meant magician when I said fate for two. And the judge like had to tell him like, oh no, this doesn't target at activation. And he tried to pick the lance back up, and I didn't let him. I'm like, no, you played lance on magician. And I mean, I was being an asshole, but it's whatever. And I faded the bear uh, face down, and he just did not recover from that because he. He just lost card advantage, and now he didn't get the advantage that he would have gotten. And I was able to push over him after that. Um, round two, he opened with Thunder King and four traps. Um, and they were, like, not Fire Fist traps. Like, one of them might have been. But there was definitely a Warning of Bottomless, and um, I don't know what the other one was, but Warning of Bottomless came up. And I just I could not push over the Thunder King at all, and he just completely wrecked me. And then game three... Um, I opened okay, like I opened with the Magician and Temperance, and since he was hiding Thunder Kings in, I went for the Magician play to go ahead and search, and um, 
uh, he effect vowers the magician, and then during his turn, he normal summons Thunder King and sets four traps again and swings over the magician. And I, I couldn't break the field down. I had Temperance, and I normal summoned Temperance, and uh, uh, he, uh, break, he ended up breakthrough skill on the Temperance, and I couldn't sack it. And then it was just terrible. He drew Thunder King and traps both games two and three, and I just couldn't get over it. And so I lost on round seven, and that that dropped me down to X two. Um, round eight. I ended up playing uh, Fire Fist again. This is the second Fire Fist, and still no Mermels. It was ridiculous how I was not getting paired against them. I mean, I main I, I teched my main deck out a little bit just for them. Um, but I played against Fire Fist, and uh, I opened really well. I had Magician Secrets, and I, that turned into Tower of Fate, and I had Valor in hand, and it was against Fire Fist, and like, that's just really hard for them to deal with. Um, and so I ended up just kind of pushing over game one because the next turn I had a Temperance to follow that up and Temperance for Priestess and just started pushing over him. And then game two, he drew Thunder King and Traps and I lost, I couldn't I couldn't get over it. And then game three, um, oops, one second, my notes just kind of got crazy for a second there. And then uh, game three, uh, he ended up getting a Thunder King on the field, but I had Dark Hole, and then I did Seekers for just with Justice, and I had two spell books in hand. So I was, at the end of that, I got another Seekers and Priestess, and I was able to just make a full push on him and won that game. And then round nine, I played against Mermails, and I didn't even take notes because I it was it was stupid. It was just game one, game two. You probably can't even see that. It's really light writing. But um, I played against Mermels, and it was the Umdan Mermels, and I drew a really bad hand. It was like um, double priestess with one spell book, and then temperance and something else. It was similar to the one when I played against Lightsworn, and um, he drew ridiculous both games. He opened with Umdan and Monster Born both games, and so he OTK'd me by turn three on both of them. He was Umdan for Dragoons. Dragoons for Megalo, or whatever he needed if he already had Megalo, and then summoned Megalo, Monster Born Dragoons, Sack Dragoons for Glacia, Glacia summoned, and then pushed for game. And it, that happened both games back to back, and I didn't even have a good enough hand to even have a set fate to even cushion the push. So that was my round nine, and then I lost, and that's when they cut to day two. And so I, I don't feel like I, I could have topped even if, um, even if I had won that and won my next two. So, anyway, overall, I, I think the build was good. I just had some really nasty draws, unfortunately, back to back in the same match, as opposed to just kind of throughout the day having them every now and then. And then um, Thunder King and Traps is just, you can't do anything about it. If they have the right traps, then you don't have the right spell books. So, there's just not much you can do about it. Um, and I, I plan on taking a break from Yu Gi Oh! for a little while. Like, I'm going to be, I'm still playing, but. Um, college is really kind of kicking my ass right now, and I'm going to take a break until we get Divine Judgment and the Elemental Dragons and all that, and um, then I'm going to start playing again, because that's when summer starts, and I'll have more time to really focus on it. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you later.